For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. This is a brand new program and uh, I am returning to the screen for Strat News Global for my weekly discussion and engagement with uh, our viewers on Strat News Global with this program. It's going to be called Ask Nitin, in which one particular topic will be selected uh, by me in consultation with my team. And uh, we will have a discussion. I will do an opening remark uh, for about seven, eight minutes. And then uh, a live audience will interact with me with their questions, their queries, uh, their comments. And uh, we will take uh, every week uh, new topics to discuss. Uh, they, of course, will be limited to uh, foreign policy, strategic affairs, defense, and uh, something that uh, concerns India. Uh, and the larger world uh, that India is engaged with. So welcome to this new program. I am Nitin Gokhale. So this time, we thought uh, we will discuss India's security architecture. If uh, old time viewers, uh, those who have been engaged with us for more than four years uh, would uh, recall, we had done a program and a, a kind of a report on India's revamped security architecture at the higher defense and higher security management level. And when I say higher security management level, I'm talking about the Cabinet Committee on Security and then downwards to the National Security Advisor and the National Security Council Secretariat, under which or along with uh, the NSCS, the National Security Council Secretariat, comes the other arms of the national security architecture. Since then, uh, many changes have come. The National Security uh, Council Secretariat has got expanded. Uh, there are changes in the personnel who are uh, heading some of the verticals under the NSCS. And the role and the scope of work of the NSCS, which directly reports to the Prime Minister through the National Security Advisor, Ajit Doval, uh, has also expanded over these uh, past four years. So I thought uh, it's good to refresh everybody's memory and give an updated information uh, for our viewers who are interested in uh, the subject of national security as well as uh, strategic affairs. And in, given the increasing flux in global affairs, uh, it is important to know who looks after what, who looks after India's security really, and who looks after India's interest on the global stage. So here goes. So let's start with... Uh, the Prime Minister. He, of course, is the supreme uh, decision maker. A lot of people would uh, like to call him supreme leader, but he is the decision maker, first amongst equal in the cabinet and the council of ministers. And the most important uh, forum or platform for uh, security decisions uh, concerning India, which could include foreign policy, which could include defense, which could include the armed forces, the intelligence agencies, the scientific and technology uh, agencies that India has, the DRDO, the ISRO, the NTRO, all that comes under or the decisions are taken by the Cabinet Committee on Security. So who are the members of the Cabinet Committee of Security? Prime Minister, of course, heads it. He chairs that Cabinet Committee on Security. And it uh, consists of four important ministers in the Cabinet. And they are the Defence Minister, in this case, uh, what we call in India, Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh. External Affairs Minister, uh, Dr. S. Jay Shankar. Finance Minister, Nirmala Sitaraman. And Home Minister, Amit Shah. These are the five people uh, who decide uh, and who uh, comprise uh, the Cabinet Committee on Security. The Cabinet Committee on Security is also assisted by the National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, who is a cabinet rank official. Call him a super bureaucrat, call him a super uh, intelligence czar, you want to call him a security czar. Whichever way you look at it, he is the linchpin of the security architecture through the Cabinet Committee on Security. So he also forms the part of uh, that meeting which takes place uh, whenever India has to take an important decision uh, on the 
security aspects, national security aspects of the country. So that's how the structure is. If you look at the organogram that is being displayed on your screen, uh, it is the prime minister, then the four ministers, which I mentioned, uh, followed by the national security advisor, who is in turn assisted by the cabinet secretary, the two intelligence chiefs, and the three armed forces chiefs. And of course, then we go down uh, the structure, which uh, again will take us to the National Security Council Secretariat or the NSCS, which is headquartered uh, in the Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel Bhavan on the Sansad Marg or the Parliament Street in New Delhi. This is uh, the hub of decision making as far as national security is concerned. They not only do day-to-day uh, -day, uh, monitoring of the uh, national security aspects uh, concerning India, but also do long-term studies, uh, monitor uh, various developments across the globe, and also commission various uh, studies uh, on science and technology, on defense, on uh, matters like the uh, Agnivir scheme for uh, recruitment. Many of you would have seen uh, NSA Ajit Doval uh, giving an interview and explaining the reasons for uh, the Agnivir uh, recruitment scheme into the armed forces uh, very recently when the government announced it. So, uh, he is the, as I said, the head of the NSCS. And uh, under him, the NSCS has got... Uh, expanded in its scope, in its work, and its personnel over these uh, past four years, uh, especially after 2018 and in the past uh, couple of years too. So let's look at that structure now, the NSCS. What does uh, the NSCS look like? The NSA is the head of the NSCS, of course, reporting to the Prime Minister directly and to the Cabinet Committee on Security parallelly, whenever required. Under the NSA, there are three Deputy National Security Advisors. They are uh, the people who head different verticals, which uh, are going to be displayed on the screen for you. But uh, let me also tell you who they are. So uh, there is also a secretary of the National Security Council Secretariat, who is also the deputy NSA, and that is Mr. Rajinder Khanna, a former head of the Research and Analysis Wing, India's external uh, intelligence agency, uh, known as uh, in many uh, popular or oh, parlance or in uh, amongst the people as raw, but it's actually RNAW, that is Research and Analysis Wing. He used to head uh, Research and Analysis Wing uh, sometime in 2015-16. After his retirement from there, he was drafted in as the Deputy National Security Advisor and also the Secretary of the National Security Council Secretariat. Which means what? which means that the NSCS is now like any other ministry in the government of India with executive powers, with the uh, rules of uh, business transaction under the government of India have been amended to empower the NSCS. So that's Mr. Rajinder Khanna for you as the senior most deputy national security advisor uh, who looks after technology, emerging technology, and uh, some of these uh, intelligence matters, which includes the... Uh, ISRO the, or the uh, Indian Space uh, Research Organization, the NTRO, which is the National Technical Research Organization, which is India's uh, tech int, uh, primary tech int uh, agency. And uh, of course, he looks after cyber security, 5G, and India's decision to uh, source 5G uh, technology from only trusted telecom sources is also under the office of the Deputy National Security Advisor, uh, Rajinder Khanna. So he is the uh, Deputy NSA Technology and Intelligence. Then there is uh, Mr. Datta Padsalgikar, who is a former IPS officer. Uh, he is uh, from the uh, was from the Maharashtra cadre of the IPS, uh, was Mumbai uh, Police Commissioner and then of course DGP of Maharashtra. And after his retirement, he was drafted in uh, to become the Deputy NSA Internal Affairs which means he looks after the internal affairs or internal security of the country and matters concerning the internal security, which will include all the CAPFs, that is the Central Armed Police Forces, uh, the uh, matters that IB or Intelligence Bureau deals with, maritime security in some cases, land border security in other cases, counter-terrorism, border areas, uh, infrastructure development, Jammu and Kashmir, Northeast, all comes under the uh, Deputy NSA uh, Internal Affairs, that is Mr. Datta Parsalgikar. 
Then there is Deputy NSA Strategic Affairs. And uh, the first incumbent of uh, the that post was Mr. Pankaj Saran, a former Foreign Service Officer or Indian Foreign Service Officer who uh, came in from Moscow. He was India's ambassador to Moscow in Russia and uh, then straight away joined as Deputy NSA Strategic Affairs. The post of Deputy NSA Strategic Affairs looks after maritime security, marine affairs, international affairs, maritime issues, uh, increasing importance of the uh, Indo-Pacific uh, that uh, India is part of under the Quad and the uh, new arrangement uh, that uh, is come to be known as the um, uh, four uh, democratic countries or alliance of democratic countries like United States, India, Australia and Japan. And um, of course, he looks after also the Colombo Security Conclave, which is a new uh, grouping, which looks after, which is trilateral to begin with between India, Sri Lanka and Maldives, has got expanded to include Mauritius uh, as its full-fledged member and uh, also has Seychelles and Bangladesh as observers. Now, this is an important grouping for the Indian Ocean security or uh, security of the Indian Ocean region. Uh, which India straddles over, which is, which is very important for India. So that is looked after by the Deputy NSA uh, Strategic Affairs. And uh, Mr. Pankaj Saran, after a three-year-long tenure, uh, made way for uh, another Foreign Service Officer, Vikram Misri, who was India's ambassador to China during the most difficult period between 2020 and 2022, uh, when COVID and the border uh, tension in Ladakh was at its peak. Uh, he was uh, India's ambassador there. Before that, he was India's ambassador to Myanmar. He's still a serving officer of the Indian Foreign Service, but uh, now occupying the position of the Deputy NSA uh, Strategic Affairs. That's uh, the three Deputy NSAs. Then in uh, 2018, the NSCS in its expansion plan had also revived the post of military advisor. Uh, there used to be a military advisor in the uh, NSCS uh, until 20, uh, 2012. And for six years, there was no incumbent for that uh, particular post. But in 20, October 2018, Lieutenant General V.G. Khandare, uh, who retired as DG Defense Intelligence Agency from the uh, Tri-Service Headquarters called the IDS, Intel, uh, the Integrated Defense Staff, uh, was drafted in as the uh, new military advisor. Now, he looked after... Uh, what is called uh, net assessment, uh, strategy, neighborhood and future technologies. And also liaisoning between the NSCS or the PMO and the three armed forces and Coast Guard, for instance. He had a three-year-long tenure and he was uh, then replaced by a former Eastern Army commander, uh, Lieutenant General Anil Chauhan, who is now the military advisor uh, in the National Security Council Secretariat. One more addition has happened this year, not very long ago, almost uh, about four months ago uh, only, when uh, the post of the National Maritime Security Coordinator was created uh, through a cabinet decision, of course. And uh, the former Vice Chief of the Indian Navy, uh, Vice Admiral uh, G. Ashok Kumar, who retired as Vice Chief from the Naval Headquarters, uh, has been drafted in as the first uh, National Maritime Security Coordinator of India. There is also, of course, a National uh, Cyber Security Coordinator under Mr. Rajinder Khanna, who looks after the cyber affairs. And he is also a former retired uh, or a, a retired uh, military officer, Lieutenant General Rajesh Pant. But he comes directly under the Deputy NSA. In this case, uh, the National Maritime Security Coordinator uh, has uh, our expanded role uh, than a cyber security coordinator because the National Maritime Security Coordinator has to liaise with state governments which are, which are coastal states uh, starting from uh, Gujarat right down. Uh, I mean, if you go down the coast, uh, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Goa, Daman, Dev, Kerala, Lakshadweep and then coming to the east coast uh, from Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa and uh, going right up to West Bengal. All those states he has to liaise with, coordinate uh, his activities with and their activities with the national security grid. Marine police of each state, uh, there are fisheries, there's fisheries ministry, there is environment ministry. So it's a very large scope that the National Maritime Security Coordinator has. 
and therefore uh, the uh, nscs if you go uh, by what i have already told you has a overview of almost everything that concerns national security traditional security like the border infrastructure armed forces uh, pakistan's designs on india china's um, belligerence on the border non traditional security like climate change environmental security uh, fisheries over uh, fishing by uh, fishermen fishing dispute between tamil nadu fishermen and the sri lankan fishermen uh, down south all that comes under the nscs by purview of its expanded scope which i have already explained to you so that's uh, where the uh, national security uh, architecture has got expanded then there is finally one point i want to make is that the nsa uh, and i call him the linchpin uh, i called him the linchpin i'm i continue to call him the linchpin of national security architecture because he is also now the chairman of what is called the strategic policy group earlier the strategic policy group uh, under the prime minister's office used to be headed by the cabinet secretary but now it is headed by the nsa and the cabinet secretary is the member secretary of the uh, strategic policy group which gives guidance on national security issues from time to time uh, looks after nuclear issues and uh, other important uh, national security decision making uh, it also uh, has uh, amongst the members the three service chiefs the uh, secretary of defense secretary of home uh, foreign secretary and uh, other relevant secretaries of uh, various ministries which means the entire overview or uh, the birds eye view for national security is with the nscs or the national security council secretariat headed by the nsa and of course who reports to the prime minister directly through the cabinet committee on security sometimes but directly also most of the time where do the two intelligence agencies fit in they also fit in uh, in this uh, structure the uh, nsa also looks after the day to day functioning or uh, gets keeps getting updates about day to day uh, issues on intelligence on operations uh, which are done by the rnaw and the intelligence bureau which is internal security as far as intelligence bureau is concerned and rnaw is the external uh, intelligence arm or agency as i mentioned to you so it's a very different nscs and a different role for the nsa from what it started off in um, in the at the turn of the century in uh, of the between 20th and the 21st century india's first nsa I remember was uh, mr brijesh mishra a foreign service officer who was also prime minister uh, atal bihari vajpayee's principal secretary so he wore dual hats that time and since then there have been other nsas just to recount some of the names there was um, mr um, dikshit uh, who was um, uh, briefly nsa then uh, mr mk narayanan then there was uh, mr shiv shankar menon and finally mr ajit doval i think now is the longest serving national security advisor of the country has been in the chair has been in charge since june 2014 and this is uh, the eighth year running So that's all I wanted to actually update you on, refresh your memories about, and give you some new information and new insights into the national security architecture. One more reform that was uh, unveiled, and which is now got a little uh, uh, sort of uh, put on the back burner, is the creation of the uh, Department of Military Affairs and the creation of the post of the um, Chief of Defence Staff. The first Chief of Defence Staff, uh, as all all of you are aware, was General Bipin Rawat. but he uh, unfortunately met an accident uh, in the uh, service helicopter and perished uh, passed away died along with 13 other uh, people on board in uh, december 2021 since then the government has uh, somehow been reluctant to appoint his successor now that is a little bit of a setback for national security reforms but that's a topic that we will talk separately in one of the other episodes but for the moment i wanted to give you this entire uh, overview of the national security architecture let's have some uh, questions some queries uh, some uh, comments if there are any and then we'll, we'll take this uh, program forward because this is the way we want to engage more with our viewers and our followers of strat news global so uh, i uh, i have a viewer uh, ayushman uh, joining us uh, 
and uh, ayushman uh, please uh, ask your question but just give a brief introduction before you ask the question go ahead hi nitin i hope you are doing well uh, good to see you uh, discussing about the whole architecture of indian structure security structure and i have been following strategies from very caught for a uh, lot of time so i keep myself updated about foreign affairs and uh, defense related things from the uh, strategies is great thing i would like to understand like how we are like ahead from other countries in the security architecture and like is there any scope for improvement in this architecture or is there something like since like there isn't any cds post uh, occupied by any person for now from a very long time now so i would like to uh, like, like to understand like how is it uh, is it uh, somewhere like lacking in our security architecture or somewhere we are going ahead only so we are going ahead as you can see uh, ayushman thank you for that question it's uh, it's a very comprehensive and a detailed question uh, and thank you for following strat news global for such a long time uh, now uh, see as i as i mentioned earlier the nscs used to be like any other uh, i would say not even a department but a, a, a small uh, kind of a vertical under the prime minister's office where they would do studies they would do some long term uh, Uh, studies about india's challenges that would come up in maritime security or environmental security or whatever there was one uh, deputy nsa and uh, one uh, military advisor as i mentioned but uh, because now it is felt that uh, the it has become national security has become very complicated and it is uh, the scope is vast the challenges are always mounting so india is expanding as and when required uh, the the kind of uh, infrastructure and the architecture that is required for tackling uh, challenges to national security so it's a work in progress i won't say that we are uh, there yet uh, fully uh, efficient or uh, fully completely to on top of the game uh, but let's not compare it with say the united states or the um, or the uk or other other places in fact many countries do not even have a national security advisor leave alone those four or five big countries uh, united states is a different cup of tea Uh, but um, the usa has been at it uh, for almost uh, 75 years now uh, since the end of the world war 2 and it has a different role in the uh, in the world it calls itself the policeman of the world it also wants to intervene wherever there are issues india does not have those uh, responsibilities or the, that desire but india is surrounded by two hostile neighbors as you are aware uh, nuclear armed neighbors china and pakistan and therefore uh it challenges always keep mounting we have internal problems there is a problem of insurgency uh growing population urbanization so many other issues so i think uh, we are good so far as uh, the uh, improvement in the infrastructure and the architecture is concerned yes i am as i mentioned in my own opening remarks the post of the cds not being occupied at the moment is a matter of uh, slight uh, concern for uh, somebody like me who studies all this Uh, but i'm sure that will happen uh, very soon uh, but uh, you should uh, rest assured that uh, everything that needs to be done is being done by uh, these people that i mentioned under the national security architecture can we have another question i think there's somebody else yeah yeah, yeah i can, can hear you uh, i can hear you uh, so, uh, i have a question that was the dutch military advisor concern itself for the belgian project but and think of the initiative because as you said china is a growing hostile power and we should actually consider uh, how they are handling the problem of china situation and all the other things so would you have to so have well it's it's yeah i mean it's a question that needs a little clarification i mean from my side uh, the uh, issue is the military advisor in the nscs is a retired uh, official the very nomenclature of the post is military advisor so uh, what the military advisor does is basically to uh, have uh, his team study various problems various issues uh, that can challenge india's national security which also includes uh, the belt and road initiative uh, and the cpec for instance the uh, you know china pakistan economic corridor therefore uh, they would study but he will not have uh, he does not have executive powers he does not take decisions on uh, what is called the um, uh, execution of operations or counter measures to be taken uh, he will only give advice to the nsa uh, and the nsa will then implement it through the service headquarters or through the foreign ministry or uh, through the rnaw that is how it will it will work out uh, 
that is the that is the way the functioning is designed between the NSCS and other arms of the government. I hope I have been able to answer your question. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Let's have another question. Uh, very good, sir. So my name is Shanti Mukta, and I have a question. Uh, even though India is joining various multilateral organizations to work together on various common issues, uh, but my uh, question is that uh, should India be dependent on such organizations? or work independently to carry forward its own independent Well, <laughs> you are a student of um, uh, international relations, uh, if I am not mistaken, uh, Shantanu. Uh, you would know uh, from uh, the kind of global uh, international relations or the global scenario that we face, uh, is that uh, you cannot work in isolation. Multilateral institutions uh, will still be important. Uh, it, you may not have to give uh, as much importance as before, uh, because the world is, uh, you know, grappling with the new realities, uh, the uh, war between uh, Ukraine and Russia, which has divided the world, as you are aware. Uh, but uh, the United Nations, despite all its uh, uselessness or uh, futility in, uh, in uh, enforcing uh, ceasefire or not uh, being able to provide uh, or um, enforce uh, ceasefire between countries or stop wars, uh, there are multilateral institutions like the WHO, there are uh, UNCTAD, there are UN agencies which do a lot of uh, help and assistance to uh, different countries. These are still very important and uh, India uh, is not yet there to, uh, because it is not a member of the P5 as you are aware, that it can uh, uh, work in isolation or take its own decisions. So it has to do a good mix of the two. Uh, sometimes it takes uh, decisions in its own national interest, puts principles, I mean, puts uh, national interests above principles like it has done in the case of uh, Ukraine and Russia war, where we have not sided with the West. We have taken our own line, uh, own position, but also work with multilateral agencies because they are still important in this uh, interconnected world. So I think uh, we'll have to wait until we become more powerful, uh, become member of the, uh, the veto uh, wielding countries like the P5, uh, until then we'll have to do a mix, a judicious mix of the two, multilateral approach as well as sometimes bilateral and unilateral approach. Uh, hi Nitin, I have yeah, one, one question. Yes, uh, please, go ahead. I would like to understand like how uh, up we are in the game, like specifically uh, related to JNK, like when there has been a like continuous civilian killings in Kashmir from last uh, so many day, uh, months. Like we have been able to like control that situation. Like how you see the current security architecture will be able to help in control that. Especially, I mean, like it is directly being controlled by New Delhi right now. Yes, uh, very good question again. Uh, but let me uh, draw your attention to uh, a kind of a report uh, or a study that uh, our team in both uh, Strat News Global and uh, Bharat Chakti dot in, which is our sister concern. Uh, did recently uh, in with the help of uh, ground reporting as well as uh, some of the inputs we get from our uh, sources uh, where we have detailed the uh, Pakistani hand in trying to keep the pot boiling in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, targeted killings of civilians, targeted killings of uh, Hindus or, uh, or uh, Kashmiri Hindus uh, going back to uh, JNK and also uh, trying to you know keep the pot boiling in JNK. Uh, that notwithstanding, if you look at every other parameter uh, about uh, JNK, uh, whether le levels of violence is down, attacks by uh, on civilian uh, targets, uh, whether it's down, whether uh, the number of uh, people involved in uh, trying to secure the border uh, is concerned, it has only gone up. And the number of infiltration attempts have also gone down uh, consequently because the grid is very good. What happens is when we sit outside JNK, uh, we do keep getting exaggerated reports. Uh, these are, uh, uh, you know, the killings are a consequence of the frustration that is there amongst uh, the jihadi groups as well as uh, Pakistan uh, ISI, which backs the jihadi groups. So I would think that um, while it is not completely uh, free of violence and uh, killings, uh, let us also look at the fact that Amarnath Yatra, which is currently on, uh, has been touch wood uh, so far uh, without any incident uh, of uh, terrorist attack or killings uh, because 
there is enough uh, precaution taken and that is an important uh, event in the calendar of jammu and kashmir uh, as far as political process is concerned it is going to take some time delimitation has taken place but uh, this national security architecture is geared towards uh, tackling that uh, major uh, challenge that uh, india has in jammu and kashmir uh, it is also cracking down on overground workers it is uh, tracking down on uh, what we call the uh, the ecosystem which uh, facilitates and uh, allows terrorism to flourish the in terms of hawala transactions uh in terms of the nexus that is there between some of the overground political workers uh, overground workers of supporters of uh, terrorist organizations all that is being uh, taken care of uh, through different measures raids of the nia uh, very diligent uh, investigations into what's happening there all that is happening so i think we are okay with it i am not 100% uh, satisfied as a as, as a student of uh, terrorism and jammu and kashmir but uh, certainly i would say uh, I, this is not something that uh, one must uh, get too worried about uh, if it can be kept at this level i think india is good to uh, carry on development activities in jammu and kashmir so that was the first episode of the new season of a program that i am launching called ask nitin we had simply nitin earlier this is ask nitin in which you the viewers will uh, get the opportunity to engage with me ask your questions make comments and also uh, keep sending feedback on what subjects and topics that we must choose to do a discussion on every weekend that is every saturday at 7 pm on strat news global you know where to reach me uh, and reach our uh, channel strat news global your social media handles our social media handles are all available to you uh, they are uh, being displayed on the screen uh, comments are always welcome you know our youtube channel in which uh, the program will be broadcast and will remain there this is your opportunity this is your chance to engage with me and strat news global on matters of national security foreign policy and international relations until the next time it's goodbye